Hello and welcome to Board Game Replay. In this series, you're going to be joining us for a post-game discussion where we talk about our experience and feature clips from some of the highlights during our session. Today we're going to be playing This War of Mine, the board game, designed by Michal Arausch and Jakub Wisniewski. Now first off, this is actually a prototype for the game as it is currently on Kickstarter. What you see here includes many of the final components that are going to exist in the game, but just keep in mind that with this being a prototype, uh, the quality as well as some of the content is, is generally going to differ from the final product. Uh, that being said, This War of Mine, the board game, is based on the hugely popular video game of the same name. The idea is that you're controlling a band of everyday people trapped in a war-torn nation, desperately fighting for survival. This is a fully cooperative game, and so you'll be starting out with just a few of these survivors in a very basic shelter. And then as the game progresses, you'll be exploring your environment to scavenge for food, water, supplies, as well as building up your shelter to help with things like the harsh weather, um, illnesses, or intruder raids during the night. If you can hold out for long enough, there will eventually be a ceasefire and you'll win the game if at least two of your survivors are still standing. So that's kind of like the basic idea of the game, but within what I just described, there's a very deep and thematic story element tied into almost every part of this game. Um, you're going to be making these really difficult decisions for your survivors as you play through the game, and those decisions uh, can have long-term effects on various things. Um, these decisions actually come in the form of story passages that are referenced on many of the cards in the game. And these are read from the included storybook with over a thousand different entries. Now, as I mentioned, this is a prototype of the game, so I don't have all of the final components, one of those being the full storybook. Um, it's in its place, they've provided basically some sample story passages to be read whenever uh, certain cards call for it. Um, nothing, not, not covering everything in the game, but just some examples to kind of give you a feel for how the game flows. Um, now, all right, before we get to our game, I just want to go down and run to the table real quick and show you how a round works, just to better illustrate how it plays. All right, so here we are all set up with This War of Mine. And one of the cool things about this game is that it comes with a special journal that's designed to teach you the game as you play. So right off the bat, you don't need to do anything more than just turn the page open, reading the setup rules here, following all the different decks. There's a lot of different cards and decks that come with the game. And then from there, you can just turn the page and then learn as you go. The first thing this book mentions is multiplayer rules, which... Uh, in multiplayer in this game, you're doing essentially the same things, every player does the same thing, but the decision making and controlling of the physical components are passed to each player around the table. And they may not sound like much, but there's some pretty important and difficult decisions to be made during the game. So to be in control of that at that moment, making that decision, uh, it definitely gives you a special role throughout the game. Uh, so for the morning, the first thing we do here, as I'll, I'm just going to flip through the book here and show you a quick round. Uh, the morning, the first thing we do is we resolve an event card, and that's something generally negative that happens that your survivors have to deal with for that day. Might be a quick thing, might be a long-lasting thing. And then weight and cold tokens, we'll cover more later. Um, but then we move right into the day, and then this is where your survivors here, inside of your shelter, are going to start taking actions. You'll notice that your shelter starts off just filled with junk. you got heaps of trash everywhere, you got closed doors, locked doors... So you only have access to this small piece of your shelter, but you can actually start taking actions as your survivors and going in and clearing out these heaps and then adding, you know, from this heap you gain these resources that go into your supply and then you can eventually, you know, break down doors, dig through rubble and clear up space inside of your, uh, inside of your shelter. And when you do that, actually one of the other actions you can take, let's say if I had this out of the way, I could build a bed down here or I could build a workshop in one of these other spots. And this gives you additional actions that you can take during the day. Now at the end of the day, your survivors are going to want some water and food. And depending on whether or not you feed them, they're going to gain hunger tokens, uh, one of the many status effects your characters can have throughout the course of the game. And um, the different types of food can do different types of healing hunger or preventing hunger and that sort of thing. So moving on. And you'll notice all these arrows here throughout. Those are all moments where you'd be passing this journal to someone else in the multiplayer rules for them to now take control of the game. So, moving on here, we go on to the Dusk Phase. This is where a visitor arrives. Typically, it's like somebody that shows up. Uh, in this case, it's a peddler. They want to do some trading with you. They have some different items to trade, so that's kind of cool. And then also you have a chance of new people arriving at your civilization. Typically, when new people arrive, they knock at your door and they bring some sort of ailment, but they also bring potential supplies, so that's something that can happen there. And then you move on to the evening phase, and these are the, the three things that you can do is you can basically put survivors to sleep to help maybe get some rest, gain some of their fatigue back. Uh, you can have them sleep in a bed. If you have a bed built, you can have them sleep on the floor. Uh, you can have them stand guard here, which is going to come into play in a little bit. I'll talk about the night raids, uh, because uh, you need to have at least somebody on guard, because otherwise uh, the night raids can be really bad. 
And lastly, you can send out people to scavenge, taking any number of survivors that you like, sending them over here, and this represents them going out scavenging to one of these different locations and going out for supplies. After you resolve that, you go through here, and this is where your survivors kind of their wounds either, their wounds and their ailments sort of compound potentially, or get better, depending on how you've treated them. So if you put people to bed, they might get better, their wounds might heal, they might gain some fatigue back, uh, illnesses if you've got medicine, wounds if you've got bandages, all things that increase your chances of getting your survivors back to their health. Um, then the nighttime comes, and this is where scavenging happens. This is where the survivors you send out here pick a location, and then they're going to draw a certain number of map cards equal to that location, and then a number of exploration cards equal to that location. And they're going to go out and try to explore and pick up supplies. And you'll see more of how this works during our gameplay video, so I won't go too far into it, but it's a big press your luck style of play because you want to keep digging and exploring as much as you can, uh, filling this findings pile and filling your survivor's backpacks full of stuff, but there's this noise level here that starts off at zero and then slowly increases from the various things you're doing while exploring. And it can eventually, once you, you have to roll against this table, equal to or under your current noise level, you're going to trigger an encounter with one of the residents at this location. And these can be a range of different things, but generally it's something that you want to try and avoid because it is going to in some way hamper your ability to explore. Once you're done scavenging or you get forced to go back from scavenging, you turn the next page here. And here's some combat rules. We'll get more into combat a little bit later, maybe during our game video. And then night raids happen. This happens at the same time as you're scavenging. So while they're out scavenging, looking for stuff, night raids are coming upon your shelter. So we flip a card over here. In this case, they're starved people, and they're here to take a certain number of supplies from your from your locker here, unless you have somebody on guard. And then you then that person's going to take wounds to try and block the number of resources they're taking. Uh, sometimes it helps to have them armed. There's a lot of different effects here that can help with, with people who are on guard. And it's important to note, if you've left people on guard or you've sent them out to scavenge, they continually get tired. You can't just keep sending the same person out every time because they're going to gain fatigue from not sleeping at night. So at the end of that, we make this Night Raids deck even harder. This deck gets increasingly more difficult as time goes on because you add these uh, Wave of Crime uh, cards to the Night, deck, to night Raids deck. Moving on from there, we go back to Dawn. The scavenging party then returns. We have some effects with uh, survivors potentially getting ill from the cold weather. Then the spirits of your survivors are going to trigger. And these are all, everybody has spirits down here on their, their cards. And these are A, B, and C. You roll the die, depending on what you roll, you're going to resolve either A, B, or C for these survivors. And they're generally all bad things against, they're all bad, what am I saying? They all do bad things, and it, hopefully you don't have to trigger their worst ones. Because generally if they're, like this guy, if he's hungry he gains misery. If, you know, he's wounded, he gains additional wounds and that sort of thing. Then from there, you're going to draw some narrative action cards, which are actually some cards that can be positive. They are, you draw four of them and you keep two. This is kind of a fun part of the game because you get to choose some actually positive things that happen to you and you get to hang on to these and use them as kind of like special powers to trigger at certain times. And after that, that is pretty much the end of a day. That is the end of a day. You'll notice there's a point here about saving. It's because that game is played, this game is played over a, a campaign, like a mini campaign style, 10 to 12 sessions or so. And if you don't want to play through the entire campaign in one sitting, you don't have to. You can actually just, at this point, at the end of the day, stop, save your progress, and come back at any time. So that's definitely a cool system built in there. And the last thing I want to mention, I'll just talk quickly about these characters. There's five different, you know, illnesses and ailments these people can have. And each one of them has its different effect on the characters during the game. But if any of them get to four, these all can flip over to level two, and then there's level three and four tokens. If any of them get to four, with the exception of fatigue, that survivor is no longer with you. They either die or leave or something negative happens to them. And the game is constantly about managing these types of things for your survivors so you can keep them with you. And the last thing I want to mention is I, I did say that the story was tied into just about every component in the game. And just to quickly show you an example, like let's say we ran into a resident here we ran into these soldiers. On the soldier card, there's actually moments here where you can try and stop the fight each round by turning to page 603. And then there's a story event there that you would resolve and make some decisions on. And if you defeat these people, you get to go to 753 and see what you got from them. Uh, there are some moments that you can actually just flip cards over. Let's say you're out exploring and you flipped over some findings. And then you get a card like this that says Reality Impact. Boom. Everything stops and you resolve some Reality Impact thing. The first thing you do is you draw a card from this Colors deck flip it over, look at the color, and then follow the instructions on this card. This one says, 
look at the location you're at and under the rare findings table. So I look at green under the rare findings for whatever location I happen to have chosen, and that's 161. Green 161. So then go and read that passage in the book and then make some decisions and resolve that throughout. And you'll notice like on the bottom of just about every card, there are these little colored symbols because different reality impacts are gonna have you flipping over different cards uh, to get a story of it. So I think that'll do it for now. That should give you a pretty good idea of how this game plays out. With that being said, why don't we get to our game? All right, so we're just coming back from about two and a half days worth of two and a half game sessions of This War of Mine. And I think we got a pretty good idea of the feel of the game and the flow of things and how it's going to continue going forward. So I think at this point we can stop and kind of talk and give you our thoughts about our experience with it. What do you guys think so far? Um, it's pretty good. Um, only two two people died, so that's good. <laughs> only two deaths so far. Um, <laughs> to be fair, that was two days yeah, and two deaths. It's like definitely, this. definitely brutal. Um, I mean, the first person that died was someone we gained as a um, an arrival, additional person. An arrival, yeah. So they already came kind of, ha had very high misery. So. Level three out yeah, of four. So. Um, I mean, from what we saw from that second arrival that we got towards the, end of the, towards the end of our session, like we got, that person came in with two wounds and two hunger. So it seems like, like instead of getting two different things, you got one thing, but like right on the edge of misery. So, yeah. oof, it's brutal. I like the scavenging aspect of the game. Yeah. That we're not, not when you're wandering around in your own home base, but when you actually go out and push your luck, it's fun to, you know, you don't know if it's like, oh, well, if I push the noise up, am I going to, you know, get people killed by drawing thugs or yeah. anything yeah. bad? And then when you actually find something, it's like draw the findings and then you, you get excited because you're like, oh, what is the cool stuff we're going to get? Sometimes it's a little bit and other times it's like four items and then you get to roll on the uh, the actual like location card for mm -hmm. even more. Yeah. It's, and like it's fun. I like it. I'm going to explore again to this okay. just to show you. So we got something called Search the Pantry. So now we can ignore this card completely, or we can discard two Exploration cards, two Draw and Resolve one card from the Findings deck in the Pantry. This is where we get all of our loot. So Searching the Pantry, I mean, we can do discard two cards or raise the noise level by one and roll for noise. I say we raise the noise level by one. Who cares? Yeah, like it's noise level by one. Is it raise it by one and roll? And roll, right? Yeah. It's my turn. I don't care what yeah. you guys say. I'm doing it. I'm being reckless. I'm in this house. I'm searching. Six. We're so good. So then draw a Findings card. So now this goes up to one. Yep, and then draw a findings card. That should have gone up already. So on the findings card. So pantry, it says. Put it right here so you can see. Plus pantry plus roll a fate die for additional findings. So what this means is we automatically get one raw food, which is amazing. It's a 10 value card. One bottle of moonshine, and we get to roll for a fate die, and we get additional stuff from the location deck. Is that also So actually go ahead and pull this location right down here, just so we have it sort of in front of us. This is where we are. I'm going to roll this. Zero. Oh no, well, it's a ten. ten. That's, that's a ten. ten yeah. Holy! <laughs> we got a knife. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, that. So every time you roll, you get that. Yeah. So when there's. This is just that we just happen to draw a pantry card right off the bat, and a knife on the first roll. Nice. Yes. All right. This. Oh, awesome. we got a knife. Uh, oh, they no, they actually go don't here. go here. They go up here, here in the findings pile oh, because so they, they take weight. Yeah, yeah, we can collect as much as we want in that pile. It's just when we have to go back home. One, we have two, to three, four, four, five. So, so we have five weight out of eight. So we're going to get a lot more than that. We're going to decide at the end how we get Oh, at the end you just leave stuff behind? Yeah, yeah. So that's amazing. Like, like not only did we, we found like raw food and medicine and, and moonshine, which is great for like alcohol and trading, but we got a freaking knife right off the bat. So we have a hatchet and a knife on us. That's nice. amazing. I, I really like what I, I definitely think that the scavenging is one of the the high points of the game. Um, I, I like similar to this. I would compare this to kind of a, a Kingdom Death Monster experience. I'll say that right out of the gate because uh, it's another game that we've we've done we've played a lot of, of recently, and it's kind of a this is a sort of a mini campaign style game where uh, the game begins in your first session. You've got two uh, a first day event, a second day event, and then from there the the event deck is essentially randomized, and the whole middle seven events are just shuffled up together. You don't know which one you're going to get. And there's some that won't even be played for that game. You'll just shuffle them up. You don't know what you're going to get. And then at the bottom three, there's a ceasefire card shuffled in there. So your game session is always between 10 and 12 days worth of, of the game. And so you, I mean, this is a long game. To sit down and play 10 games in a row would take many, many hours. Probably, I don't know, 
six, seven, eight hours, maybe more, depending on how you play. And yeah, this was what two days and two, we, three hours. So. Yeah, two, three hours for, to go to go. And two, we three, were learning so. a lot, so yeah, it takes, so always takes longer, but about an hour a day, maybe. But yeah. Anyways, what I was saying was, um, the, in this sort of this mini campaign style, like you feel like you're going out and adventuring. You really feel like you have a commitment to your civilization and. So going out in that scavenging phase, it does really feel like a, a, a really special part of the game. That's where you're going out to, to hopefully come back with, with all of these supplies and, and really boost up your, your, your house. At least from our experience, it seems like you definitely get a lot more food while you're out there because, I mean, there's not going to be all that much food indoors, as mm -hmm. would make sense. So, um, I mean, we, we got a lot of food and then... Draw an event card, we got... This is probably good, right? Uh, Plague of Rats? That sounds pretty reasonable. Sounds positive. Got knives. Remove all green tokens from the storage. Oh, that's just that's just our food. What? One, two, three. Oh my god. Four. Okay, I'll go ahead. And I'll take those. Well then. Well, next, we're if you had a dead fall trap, we don't. We do not. All right. <laughs> all right. We're all positive. Why? Lee is the game. Friggin' rats. The rats enjoyed it. Oh, oh yeah. god! Remove all green tokens. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was rough. Speaking of the tokens, though, it's it's not like you uh, go out and it's like, oh, you have a food token. Oh, you got these little components. You have pieces of wood, little gears that act as components, water drops. Yeah. And then you have like each each kind of set of things. There's like for food. There's like there's raw food. There's cooked food or canned food. Yeah, you can see some of it there's, here if you haven't already. Each one has a like, whole pile of tokens. Yeah. So when you get these things, you it's just this mass assortment, and yeah. it, it's neat when you draw out like uh, things you can build. You just put them together. Yeah. I like just the variety that you have. I like that too. It, it makes it more worthwhile when you go out somewhere. Yeah, and it gives you like a goal to look for. All right, we definitely need to find one more electric part when we go out. Yeah, you know. And to expand on what you're saying about the scavenging phase, I mean, that's like, that is like a big meat, that's a big part of the game, and I, I honestly feel like we're out there, and when we're first laying it out, I'm explaining it to Jeremy, and I think when the first time you and I played, we were explaining, we're like, okay, yeah, we're laying out these map cards, and Jeremy's like, well, where, where do we go? Where's the location? Is it this? It's like, well, no, it's, it's fairly abstracted, because you're, you're building the map kind of down here with these cards, yeah. and the map is, is really just like a static number of like basic things you're going to see while you're there, in addition to the exploration cards, but... The more you go and the more you start flipping those exploration cards, the more you kind of feel like you really are at this location. You really are at this old town or this hotel. And when you start pulling those cards and that noise level starts going up and you're like, oh, God, what's should we keep going? Should we keep going? And yeah. all of a sudden you, you're like, okay, that's it. We got an event. We got to resolve it. So raised by one. Yep. And it still can't be fixed, right? Oh, we can. Oh, so we triggered an encounter because you rolled a one. That sucks. Hooray. We just basically pause what you're doing right now. You were going to dig through that shovel, but in the process of smashing it in with a shovel, you made too much noise with rolling the literal worst thing that you could yeah. possibly roll. Uh, and now we're going to deal with an encounter, which means we draw the residents who happen to live in this location. So what this is jerk. going to go, go ahead and put that right down here. Ah, civilians. Here's, oh, this is cool. nice civilian. You wanna read that out? Turns out that, that, that there are miserable looking people hiding in here, mostly elders, women and children. If from now on, until leaving this location, you will take anything from a card marked as private, roll a fate die for each character taking part in this scavenging. A result equal to or lower than the character's empathy equals raise misery by one. Okay. You may also share some food or meds with these people. C mm. 390. So, or, or talk to them. C 759. We do we have any meds with us anywhere? No. No, but we can talk to them. We could talk with them. And food. We can share food. Food or meds. Ooh, we could share food or meds. That might well, give us... Um, nobody's really miserable. Oh, she's really miserable. Oh, we could really benefit from this. Let's, yeah. let's see what we can talk to them. Uh, we can share some food or meds. You discard any yellow-green tokens from the finding pile with a total value of three or more. Once you do, roll a fate die for each character. and A result equal to or lower than this character's empathy will, will lower their misery by one. One of the kids recently crippled by a sniper bullet dances as if the war just ended. They may not have a lot, but they can surely enjoy what, they, what little they do. Give them, give them one of the give foods. Them all our raw food. No, we got one left. Okay. All right. We, got, we don't have enough space to carry it all back. As you anyway, say, that's so why. Yeah, we're right. Now we're going to yeah. roll a fate die for each character and lower their misery by one. There's only one person who by actually one? is miserable. What is it? Potentially rolling if by it's one. You have to roll their empathy? equal to or less than their empathy. Oh, so you got to hope for a four or less. Whatever. It's a shot. Nope. Nope. Oh, well. Definitely not. <laughs> Worth a shot. We can't carry all that stuff back. <laughs> There's your one. <laughs> 
these guys are just going to hang out. They're not hostile. But if we right. take things that say private, which we've yeah. already resolved a couple that said private. Where it is. They if we choose so to encounter their, like, we, or we yeah, stole yeah. stuff on the pantry of the heat. Sure, that's fine. So that's kind of a cool, like, mechanism in the yeah. game, like, private stuff. So we keep going. You don't know. It could be thugs that are literally going to try to murder you with assault rifles, or it could be, you know, homeless guys that want to roll you, or, you know, whatever. You don't know. A little old lady with or, a book that wants oh, to give you vegetables. <laughs> I thought that our first encounter that we had was super cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. we got to experience in that one thing, we got to experience one of the, the trading in the game, which we hadn't seen. Yeah. Sometimes the locations will have the trading stuff built into it where you can, like, discard five expiration cards, pay the trade fee, which is the value of some items, and then you can start trading. But we actually got to experience that from a story event from, a, like, a little old lady that we ran into inside yeah. of the building, which that just really took me into the theme. And I, I felt like we were in this building. And we got when we got done with her, it was like if we decide to trade with her, we got to bail after. She's like, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do a nice trade together. I'll give you some vegetables, but then get out of my house. Get the hell out of here! Like <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. Like oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. One of the things that I'm really excited about. We didn't obviously it's not in the prototype. They did a little bit of it, mm-hmm. but it's the scripts book. That's and a huge part. Yeah. If a lot of you guys or anyone has played uh, uh, Arabian Nights, Tales of the Arabian Nights, yeah, yeah. Or, above and below is another yeah. one. Yeah, you literally. You, you find that the numbers are on here somewhere. Uh, on the bottom, on the bottom of, the of just about every type yeah. of card. I mean, like the bottom of the expiration cards have all these colored numbers, and that represents the story you event after drawing a colors card, yeah. and you'll get that type of story. Yeah. Or you know. yeah. it's supposed to hold about a, a thousand I different think they events. A thousand plus and we, events. We yeah. read one of the story events, and we we went in. It was just it was it was a not, nothing one. Like nothing happened. It was just you found a TV, but it was like it took. Like two minutes to read through it. Like yeah. It was it was really is in that depth. an insult to my reading. Speed? No, 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 no. It was just it was really oh, in depth. Like... Here we go. You freeze in place. You hear voices ahead. They were a bit out of place, loud and cheerful. Stepping carefully, you peek through a gap in the door. A buzzing box stands in the middle of the room. Sparks occasionally fly out of the many cables connected to it. The cables are connected to a TV. The screen emits a silvery glow. It is very colorful. A commercial break just began. A beautiful, luxurious car, pills to be used once you've eaten too much, fashionable trousers. It is as if you watched images from another world. Double cheese pizza, cheap and delicious. Come and get it. The closest restaurant of this brand is 300 kilometers away, beyond the borders of this inhuman war. This war that is nothing but a new nuisance to the rest of the world, stuffing its belly with double cheese pizza whenever they want. Of course, they express their outrage and sympathy. It was really powerful at the beginning and gave us some hope. After a month, it grew weaker. And after a year, we've forgotten. Pushed from the chattering box by colorful commercials and funny shows. There, far away from us, the normal, joyful, and careless life goes on. The TV crackles and the screen dims. The buzzing box suddenly becomes quiet and some smoke rises from it. All right, so that's interesting, actually. I was waiting for a decision to be made in here, but it looks like some of the events you run into are just purely story and kind of a depressing kind of bring you into the game as for. That's really cool. So while we're out here exploring... We flip a card over, and it's we happen to notice this TV in the other room. So that's kind of a cool story thing. I thought all of the things in the game were like A or B. Choose this or choose that. There are they, there's tons of those in the game. There's no negative impact. Yeah, there's a, there's no negative impact. We drew a reality impact, and it was just depressing story film. We've we've played games before. That's where cool. It just that's says cool. You draw a card, and it's, you're like waiting for something horrible, and it goes nothing happens. Right. All is yeah. quiet. <laughs> it's kind and of this, one of those things. That they had it, but they filled it in with a really cool flavor text. Nice. You know, as you go through here, it's like all all these locations are going to have these like yeah. really cool little plot lines and just yeah. events to happen, yeah, which just, just brings you further into like the locations that you're in. Yeah, that's it, what's going to be exciting. Instead of just a card that says nothing happens, yeah, there's a a paragraph or two of like just kind of filler story to fill out to flesh out the environment, which yeah. is cool. I thought that really again that really it took me into the theme and that much more and. Again, to, to what you're saying, this is the prototype copy. We, we don't even have a storybook. I mean, there's only like a couple yeah. dozen sample stories that were provided here, and they don't even necessarily line up with the cards we're drawing. But it, it definitely gives us a taste of that. And I'm really excited to see the, the full game and, and having a whole storybook and story cards and stuff that there's... There's all, even all kinds of expansions that they've talked about on the Kickstarter at this point, and there's more story to be developed. And so there's even add-ons that you can purchase to like, flesh out some of the stories a little bit more. All that stuff seems really cool, and yeah, I mean, I keep forgetting about that as we play. Like, there's a solid game in what we're doing already. It's not it's not very complicated, but I would say it's, I want to say deep. I'm trying to think of the right word to describe it. Like, it's not a game that I would consider complex. There's a lot of phases. It's intricate, maybe? Is that the right word? I don't know. It's, 
once you get the rules down, I want to say, I mean, obviously, once you learn anything, it, you know how to do it. But sure, sure. Yeah. There's, there's just a lot of decks. There's a lot of phases to go through. There's a lot of things to do. But once you know that, oh, I need to do these, they're, they're not hard to do. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. you can just, once you, like, even with the journal, you go, okay, I have to do this. I remember what that is. Draw from here, draw from here, do mm -hmm. this, move the guys. I think depth is what you're looking for. Like yeah. I think depth, It's a deep right? game. There's a, there's a lot to do. But none of it is very complex. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. None of it is particularly like brain burning in what you're gonna do. It's really, it's it's a lot of. Um, I mean, there's a lot of dice rolling. You're gonna roll some dice. You're gonna get bad luck and you get good luck. <laughs> but the, the the narrative is very heavy here. The theme carries very heavily. It's very much like a resource management style game with Definitely. some great flavor thrown in and some you know really some miserable things. We didn't really have that many miserable things happen, but. I've heard some samples of some other stories and even kind of peeked at a few of the ones in there. <laughs> There's some pretty dark stuff. So this game can definitely get dark. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we had two people die. We had a survivor join us, and uh, she, within a couple... In within the same round. That she happened to throw. see... What, did she, what, what killed her? So now, Spirit, we're going to roll a fate die, which is actually going to be rolled by you, Brian. For who? Um, for everybody. Every person? Yep. Like, so we start, like, one person and go down? Nope, just roll it, and you'll see. So seven. roll the seven. So now we're going to resolve each point marked as B from each character sheet. So go right to uh, left to right. So if Marco was ill, lowers illness. He's not ill. Great. Uh, discard one cigarette from storage or raise her misery by one. Oh sh! Did you not see that? Why? Yeah, but there was. She's dead. When we helped the old, when we helped the people with food, I'm sure helping them out or something would have. You know, Maybe. lowered it by making her happy, but we didn't. Have we didn't. We couldn't do it. We, we just. It was no, basic. We, we so. rolled for it. She just happened to lose. It's, oh yeah. That's the life right there. She just got so miserable. She's just no longer part of our civilization. So, man. Now this is where we actually add her. So it says to um, see characters epilogue. Tough girl she was. Erica died. Harsh reality of living in a ghetto could not be compared to the horrors of war. Would have become of her if she survived? We'll never know. Like so she's well, dead. She's dead. She's gone. Yeah, she got so miserable that she's just gone. The box. Oh boy, I didn't read far enough ahead. Hang on. Death among us. If up until this moment of this day, any character was killed, died, or left, roll a fate die for each character still in the group. A result equal to or lower than this character's empathy raises this character's misery by two. Oh boy. By two. All right. She, was she, when you gain four misery, you gain the epilogue token for that character, which we don't fully know how that's fleshed out, but there's a story event related to that survivor. She goes away. We don't know whether it so was So she either died or just left. Or left. Like, there's left a story reason why they're no longer in our party. Right, basically. right. That's a good point to talk about now, too. There's, uh, in this prototype, there are six characters that come in the game and six miniatures, which are, which are pretty sweet. They're really nice miniatures, actually. And in the final version, it's going to be 12. So we're just playing with a few. We actually cycled through all the characters that are actually pulled from the draw yeah. deck. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think with this with this prototype, you couldn't quite play a full campaign anyway. So it's probably good that we stopped kind of when we did after two or three sessions. Because uh, eventually, I mean, the stories, there's only a couple of examples for each one. So we were, we're going to run out of them. Yeah, you quickly. start repeating relatively quickly. But aside from that, where we stopped in the game, I think... We have a lot. Le there's a lot left to experience, just even in our own our own home. I don't know what you'd call this. I guess our shelter. Yeah. This is our shelter. Yeah. And so yeah. we've got closed doors and rubble and furniture. And if any of you are familiar with the video game, you'll know that this is. I mean, this is basically the same thing that you start in in the video game. And yeah. So I mean, we've we've barely scratched the surface of this one here, but I definitely think we got a good flavor of how it how it plays out. I mean, I, I get excited. Think about breaking down all these doors and moving this stuff, and just looking at some of the things you can build. I mean, of course, looking at now, yeah. I'm like, how the hell are we ever going to afford that? <laughs> but yeah. sometimes things go well, and you get a lot of resources. So I like the building aspect of that, too. Yeah, I, the I, fittings, I, they call them. I was them, like, yeah. it, for, for the game, you almost you almost don't need it, It's just, but it's an extra thing. It's just, yeah. it's awesome that it's there, because you, know, you can use the resources not just to make some, like, few pieces of gear for yourself, or to, like, feed or take care of your characters, mm -hmm. but you literally can build, like, workshops to create other things, right. that water filtration system. You know, it's just patch up some hole. holes in your yeah. house and let the oh, yeah. there in and fortify the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't even get to any of that, any of the cold air. But mm. yeah, that's another aspect to it. Yeah, and then you can. There's also upgrades to the fix. Yeah. Uh, what was it fixtures? fittings? Fittings. The fittings. Yeah. Yeah. There's upgrades to the fittings that you can build as well. That make you build one thing and then improve upon it and make it even better. So. Yep. And to compare this, talking about, I want to talk about these uh, the narrative actions, which I thought were yeah. really cool. These were a surprise because just about everything you get in this game is negative because yeah. it's it's a brutal game. It's it beats you down. And and to, to compare this to Kingdom Death Monster, another game that we've played a lot of, and this this game feels a lot does a lot of that same thing. Where like even when something like 
okay happens, it's like it's a cause yeah. for celebration because yeah. <laughs> yes, we got a card that gets us five wood. That's amazing. Like, yeah. and instead of like you know a character going hungry and dying, like it's, yeah. that's yeah. amazing, right? <laughs> you know, any of these like these narrative actions are a great addition because they they give you something to sort of keep down in front of you and and boost your luck at that opportune time when you want to. So that's that's definitely a cool addition. So yeah, there's a couple other things to add here towards the end. I want to mention that we got a little note along with this to mention some things that they've already chosen to upgrade based on some feedback they got. Obviously a full book of scripts, a uh, full deck of tw uh, full 12 characters, as I mentioned. Uh, there's a separate mini deck and a separate journal for an easy introduction on the first playthrough. Now, what they're doing is, if you haven't already heard it, they're trying to make this game where you just can set up the board, follow the setup instructions, and learn the game as you go. And for the most part, it really does do that. Because there's a lot of things you don't need to know what narrative actions are for the first thing. You don't, like, what does it matter? No. Yeah, the absolutely. way the game flows, it actually, the first event card you pull from the deck is just a skip three quarters of the first phase of the game and then learn the scavenging phase, learn the night phase, learn all that stuff. Then once you know the game a little bit better, you actually get to do a full phase, learning the day and stuff. So I think that that concept is definitely here. I mean, obviously, I think it needs a little bit of polish in terms of translation and some and some final thoughts, which they're they're obviously working on, but... I definitely think it's possible, and I think this this does a really good job. I think it's a really good way to learn the game for sure. And you got you actually get to learn it kind of from me as we play yeah, through. Yeah, but, these guys tried it the first time, and then yeah. I joined, and this was my first time. So, but to be fair, I, I was a little confused by a few things that needed to be clarified. But once they were, the game was like, oh, I know how to play this game, yeah. and that, that was never really a point where I had to really scratch my head because it all it all does make sense. They do kind of introduce it to you slowly. So. Yeah, it made sense when I was when they were explaining it to me. Yeah. It, it made sense. <laughs> Again, it's just a matter of kind of polishing and mm -hmm. translating and whatnot. Yeah, so again, more stuff. There's different graphics and layout from the prototype. Um, some better illustrations on the cards. More story fluff on character cards. Better insert for the box. Um, anything else that jumps out of here. Plastic game components, they're saying, instead of state tokens, that will be plastic things. It's actually an app system, too, that they're going with, which is really cool um, to sort of add a second book of scripts, which sounds amazing, which wow, I would man. be all over that. Uh, scenario modes for shorter playthroughs. If you just and you didn't want to go through a full 10 or 12 game campaign, there's going to be scenarios and that sort of thing. Um, I think, I just wanted to mention, I think the apps would be awesome because it's that way you can make it kind of ever expandable. You can keep adding more. Yeah, that's so, such that a That would be really idea. cool. A karma system, I guess. Uh, adjustable difficulty levels, like number of days from a ceasefire. Again, it was, it's, yeah. it's anywhere from 10 to 12 now, but you can adjust that, which is cool. And uh, something that we just happened to notice, we looked at the Kickstarter here before we got on, and uh, they've already got two expansions that are, are able to be added on right now on the Kickstarter, and there's a tactics expansion which expands the, I believe, the combat a little bit. There's some soldier miniatures, a separate tactics board it looks like, and I, I can't speak 100% for this, but it's again, it's still just in development. But that looks like something that would expand on some of the combat aspects of the game, which the combat's you know fairly light, fairly abstracted, you're rolling some dice. Uh, I, I certainly wasn't dissatisfied with the combat. I mean, it's just um, one yeah. small component of the game. Okay, we encountered them. Found some thugs. Jeremy. You found some All right, so All now right. we roll a d10. Roll a d10 again. Roll it over here. Oh, God. <laughs> this sucks, dude. We're going to die. Two. Four. So there's two, two thugs, and we're going to draw them randomly from this box here. Oh, so the, what they and get. this represents what their gear is going to be. Oh. So they've got a knife, which is great, and a knife! Awesome. And this is their prowess in the corner. So they actually go here into cold steel. First, roll for the enemies first, just so we know how many so wounds we'll go with prowess two guy. What is, yeah, how does that work then? You would just roll to get the better result? He only rolls, he only re-rolls if he misses. Oh, so even if he rolls a one, he stops? Correct. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey. Great. So we got one, so now note that one wound is coming to somebody. We'll just make a note of that, right? All right. So then the second guy, he has three prowess, so we can re-roll up to three times, but... We were all twice, but yeah. He's going to oh, stop right nice. there. So awesome. Only two so wounds coming another, to us. Another one wound. Another wound token. That's actually really good. So now we get to retaliate. Or we It happens simultaneously. So, so why don't you roll... Pavel is going to attack. Pavel with a knife first. Knife attack. Come on, three. Come on, three. All right. He gets one re-roll. Pavel. Oh, man. <laughs> Pavel, you're the worst. Now this, we get, we, get two, we get three total rolls on this guy. <laughs> oh, okay. Re-roll it. Reroll it, reroll it better. I'm doing it. I got one. All right, All right. so yeah, one wound. Tick one of them. To, dude, we're going to lose one both our guys right now. <laughs> you, guys ready to, you guys ready to read the epilogue for two more characters? And then we start another round of combat and pass it over to the next person who's going to roll. So I'll, oh. I'll go to me for the rolls here. So I'll do the bad guys first. First bad guy. Bad guy A with, with two prowess. He stops right there with two wounds. And then the other guy is going to go and one wound. That's not terrible. That's not terrible. Pavel with a knife. 
That's I'm not gonna re-roll that. So that'll just kill. Does Auto. he die there or he'll go no. there and then death? Then yeah. death. So okay, yeah, he'll so he'll he'll be, he'll be dead. Oh yeah. good, cool. And then I'm gonna roll for punchy. One, re-roll. Two. One more re-roll. Double punch. Come on. Oh, oh that sucks. Okay, so three total wounds coming to us now. If you kill someone, excluding thugs, you roll a fate die and you gain misery, but yeah, yeah, I don't. We don't feel too bad about this. So I'm Brian, fine. roll for the one remaining thug. Whoops! Oh sh! That's gonna kill somebody. Guaranteed death. That brings them up to like, like if four. they get to if four, they get to four, they're dead. So kill the guy that's weak. Well, Pass the knife before do the he dies. Damage first. Yeah. <laughs> so so Ryan, you... they attack at the same time. Yeah. So. so roll his. Now you're attacking with Pavel. Oh my god, dude. And oh, he... hey, at least he can kill him. So he's completely hosed. He's gonna have his own little epilogue. Okay, he was as soon as that happens, soldier. combat is now ended because everybody's dead, oh. or well, the bad guys are dead. Uh, immediately after resolving the combat, since we had a character die, roll a fate die to check the reaction of other characters. A real equal to or lower than the character's empathy, they interrupt expiration and go back home. Oh, oh so God. just one equal. To, you equal want a six or higher? Six or higher. Big money. Ten. Ten. Right. He doesn't care that his friend just died. The guy was a miserable jerk anyway. He oh, thought it was great. Oh boy. I mean, what are you just... God, that Or misery by one. That absolutely sucks. All right, so they're gone. Uh, after defeating all enemies in combat, we can see 328 for findings. Again, we have a sort of a temporary book here. It doesn't have all the things you would find. 328 in this case is just going to be going under fi findings after defeating all enemies. Uh, fresh blood slowly soaks into the ground. Draw and resolve one card from the finding deck. See furniture. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Keep going or stop. Uh, moreover, place all the weapon tokens used by the enemies in your findings pile. If there were still any corresponding tokens left in the box. So, so what do they knives. have? Two knives. Uh, two knives, yeah. So yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, you. Could, I mean, we went the whole first time without even doing any combat. So. True, yeah. So it's not like it happens every time, anyway. Yeah. So that that could be cool. The fleshing out the the tactics expansion for co for additional combat, and there's even a sewers expansion that they're talking about, which is, I guess, I assume another place you could go and explore. So definitely some cool stuff. If you're interested in this game, and, and if you're a fan of the video game for sure, check this out. Yeah. And uh, if you like sort of campaign style, story driven, yeah. um, narrative games. Yeah, I think cool. the best part is it's it's very randomized. So you can play this a bunch of different times, and especially if you're adding on expansions, like. There's no reason, like, it's, I see a lot of replayability. Oh, yeah, even in the base game. Yeah, yeah. You would, yeah tons of replayability. Right. So many random events, so many different things that can happen. Different characters, yeah. It's a whole different game every time you play it. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us here. That was This War of Mine. Definitely check it out on Kickstarter if you're interested. It's got probably, I don't know, another, a little bit more than a week left as of this release of this video. So definitely check that out if, you, if you're interested. Um, we had a great time with this. I am definitely excited for the final product. This is definitely a game I'm going to be very interested in picking up. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, very yeah, cool, awesome. very cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you again next time.